What's up and welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm so stoked about today's video because I've been just uh, I've been just procrastinating making this video for a long time. One, because we we've, we've it's, it's been so busy, and two, I just feel like when someone makes a video like this, they think they're an expert in that thing. And I'm definitely not an expert, but Tommy has been on like 24 flights since she's been born, and so I feel like I have a little bit of experience with the baby the age of you know, zero to six months. Um, I'm sure a lot of this applies to kids that are older too, but I, that's kind of all I know is the zero to six month stage. Tommy's five months now, and yeah, she's been a really good traveler, so I think we're super lucky, but I think some tips and tricks have helped out. So let's get started with this video. First and foremost, what to bring. Number one is a dock -a tot This thing is awesome because it also like is a bed when you um, are sleeping in a hotel, Jack and I usually request a king size bed and then we just have her between us and that. The dock -a fairly safe because um, it's got like hard edges so you can't like roll over on them or anything. Um, no judgment to those who do co-sleep at all. I just, I'm a crazy sleeper. So the dock -a gives me a little bit of peace of mind. And the dock -a also has like this plastic carrier. You can either carry it on the plane with you or what we do is we check it in our luggage on one of the sides, stuff it with as much stuff as we can and then we pack our stuff and Tommy's stuff on the other side. While traveling with a baby, it's super important to pack as least amount of bags as you can because you have her car seat and her and all the things and the diaper bag and the camera bag. So we try to pack as light as we can. Really quick, I forgot to mention, I just wanted to mention why we travel so much. Um, we travel so much because we're wedding videographers and most of the weddings that we do are out of state. So usually they're quick trips, but when we do travel for like a vacation or something, they'll be like five day trips. Mostly we just travel for weddings though. Number two is a hand pump or an LV pump, the one I use, or whatever pump you can because I personally love to pump a bottle that morning and bring it with me at the airport so like in case she's like fussy while we're in security or waiting in line, I can just like shove a bottle in her mouth instead of like trying to nurse her which kudos to the moms that do that. It's kind of hard and just difficult if you're like standing in line. So I really like to just have a bottle on hand with me and then I'll pump and feed her that bottle on the plane usually or if I need to, I can obviously nurse her. But I would just pump and bring milk if you can because that just makes life a lot easier. Speaking of milk, I also bring extra milk with me on the trip in like a Yeti cooler. You're not allowed to bring like ice with you in a cooler through TSA, but you are allowed to bring those like mini blue frozen things. Um, I don't know what they're called, just ice packs, I guess. You're allowed to bring those on the plane, so you can bring all your breast milk with you and then take it on the plane with you, but if you do have ice, they'll make you dump it out, and then maybe you can go in through security and get more ice. But another word about TSA is sometimes at airports, like certain TSA workers, don't know that you can have breast milk and you do not need to get it tested like they're allowed to swab the outside of it if they need to but they're not allowed to like open it and test it themselves it's like a super big no-no but some people don't know that so you can just remind them and say it's on your website you're not allowed to touch my breast milk you can swab the outside but not inside at all so just make sure you're super confident with that because um, it's a good thing to know beforehand i like to bring extra milk because the first trip we went on i was like two weeks postpartum we went to arizona for a wedding and my milk supply dropped and i don't know what it was i think it was a combination of me being dehydrated and just traveling and stuff but i heard from other moms that traveling can um drop your milk supply a little bit so that's why i like to bring extra milk just in case especially because i'm working i have to make sure jack has enough milk to feed her while i'm gone that is the reason that I bring extra milk. Otherwise, if it's just a vacation, I don't really bring extra milk with me. I just like pump in the mornings and have an extra bottle throughout the day. Enough about milk. <laughs> I love the Duna stroller. This thing is probably my highest suggested product that you should get for your baby if you're going to plan on traveling because it is so compact and lightweight. I'm gonna show a video right here of Jack opening it and then deassembling it. It is the easiest thing. So when you get to the airport, you just take them out of the car seat, you open up the stroller, and you can stroll the car seat with you through security, and you just have to take your baby out of the car seat during security. They swab it, check it, and then you get to go through. Then when you get to the gate, you can just get a pink tag for it and leave it right at the bottom, like where you get on the plane, and then you grab it like right there as you get off the plane. So it's super easy. And then when you get your rental car, you already have your car seat, and you don't have to bring a base or anything. It is so nice. 
So it's an all-in-one. I would definitely recommend getting it. Yes, it's expensive, but maybe try finding one secondhand or something like that because it's super, super useful if you're traveling. Like, I don't know what we're going to do if Tommy grows out of it. Like, I don't know, like, we're supposed to bring a big kid car seat and then like a stroller. I have no idea. So we will cross that road when it comes. When we're packing, I like to put three pairs of jammies in her diaper bag. And I used to just bring two. And then I realized that that was stupid because Tommy, well, maybe your baby doesn't blow out like mine does or throw up, but Tommy blew out of three outfits in a row before we even got on the plane. So we were on our last outfit for a seven hour plane ride. It was the most stressful thing ever trying to keep her clean and so I would just suggest bringing three extra jammies with you and the outfit that they're wearing, just in case. I usually bring five or six diapers and then wipes. I try to keep it super light so I'm not overpacking. Speaking of diapers, when I travel, I bring a lot of diapers. I try to bring as much as I can because they're gonna grow out of the diaper size that they're in soon, so you wanna kinda use all that you have. I'll bring usually as many as I can in my checked bag and if I'm there, I'll and I run out of diapers, I can obviously just go to CVS or wherever and get more diapers. I know a lot of people don't bring diapers with them because they don't wanna pack them, but I just think it's worth it to get rid of the ones that I already have. Something that's really gonna help you through the airport and just like the smoothness of everything is getting TSA PreCheck. I talked about this on my Instagram story. Um, TSA PreCheck is pretty much where they do a thorough background check on you as a person, make sure you're a good person and you don't have a felony and you don't have a warrant out for your arrest or something and that you haven't killed somebody before. And they just basically check everything to make sure you're pretty much a good person that they can send you through security with the least amount of screening. This allows you to skip lines like crazy. Like when we get to the airport, sometimes the line goes like all the way through the whole entire airport. And all we have to do is wait in a line of like four or five people. The best part about it is that you don't have to take your laptops out. You don't have to take your shoes off. And when traveling with a baby, those two things are seriously a game changer. Like even if the line was longer for TSA than it was for just a normal person, I would still go on the TSA line just to not take my shoes off or my laptop out or any electronics or anything. So definitely do that. That is a game changer. Another tip, if you are wearing a baby carrier and your baby's on you, you don't have to take her out or him out to walk through the security, only if they're in a car seat. So that's another good tip. If your baby's sleeping and you don't wanna wake them, just put them inside your carrier. Another tip is the carrier. I have three different carriers. I have the Ergo Baby, the Wild Bracelet, and the Solly Baby Wrap. I love the Solly Baby Wraps because they're cute and photogenic and I like them. The Wild Bird is super cute too. My favorite one and most durable is the Ergo Baby. I think it's like $79. I'm not sure about that, but I think it's pretty cheap and it's nice because it's black and it's just nice that Jack can carry um, Tommy in that too and so can I. So we usually um, pack that in our checked bag and use it a bunch while we're traveling. So if you are traveling alone, I would suggest bringing your Dakota on the plane with you or your Snuggle Me Organic or whatever you use because it's so nice not to have to hold them the whole flight. It gets really exhausting if you're the only one flying. Luckily, I have Jack with me most of the time, so we just switch off. So that's why we don't bring in the dock top. But I would, if I were you, traveling alone. That way you can set it on the seat next to you and have your baby sleep without you holding them the whole time, especially if it's a seven hour flight or something. Tommy sleeps really well and naps really well when we swaddle her. She kind of knows it's bedtime and she knows she needs to take a nap and so it calms her down. So we make sure we bring two swaddles with us on the plane and they also work as burp rags, so that works too. Another thing that is small but important is a binky clip. Um, when you're walking through the airport, the last thing you want is your baby's binky falling on the ground and you don't, yeah, the things that are on the ground at the airport, the people, the germs, the everything. I would just try to keep a binky clip on your baby so that your binky's not falling everywhere. That's a thing that I forgot one time and it was like the worst thing I forgot. As for the plane ride itself, um, we've been really lucky. I don't know what it is, but Tommy does really well on flights. And I think it's just because we come very prepared. We have a strategy. When she gets fussy, we don't get overwhelmed and like freak out and worry about what other people are thinking. Cause if other people are mad that your baby are fussing, like they're just dumb and you don't need to worry about them at all. Cause you can't control your baby. But I do think your baby feeds off of your energy. So if you try to be as calm as possible during the whole travel experience, I think your baby will feed off of that. Especially if it is a new environment. During takeoff, I would suggest feeding your baby if you can, either nursing or bottle feeding, whatever you do, um, because that just helps their ears not to um, like get earaches. It helps their ears pop as you take off, and it also helps their ears when you are landing. So when they say like, 
we are beginning our descent or whatever they say just try to pull out a bottle or at least a binky if they don't want to eat just to get their ears um popped we haven't had a problem with that yet there has been one flight where tommy was just completely zonked and she wouldn't wake up and wouldn't take a binky and wouldn't eat and she was just fine but i know that some baby's ears are a little bit more sensitive when packing for the baby for the actual trip itself i like to make sure that i i like to make sure that i have three outfits per day for Tommy. And I know that sounds excessive, but it's just so like, if you're at the beach or if you're in the mountains, you get so dirty and you just want them to have clean outfits to go to bed in and clean outfits during the day. So try to bring as many outfits as you can fit in your bag. Their clothes are super tiny, so you can fit a lot. And while I'm on the plane, I like to make sure that I have little toys for Tommy to play with. She's just barely starting to play with toys. So I'm gonna make sure that tomorrow when we leave on our flight, I have toys that make a little bit of noise. And I also bring our sound machine because she loves that. And I also like to make sure I bring socks and warm clothes because flights are freezing sometimes and there is nothing worse than that. I don't know if this is like protocol or if I'm gonna get in trouble for this one day, but Tommy's so tiny that like if she just has a diaper that I need to change, like that's just a pee diaper, I just change it on my lap really quick. Obviously, if there's someone sitting next to me, I don't do that. But if it's just Jack and I are on our own row, I do that. But... If it's a baby diaper, I always go in the bathroom and usually they have like a pull down thing um, over the toilet that you can change them on. If not, you just have to sit on the toilet seat and just change them on your knees, which is kind of hard, but definitely doable. I'm trying to think of the other questions that I get asked a lot about with traveling with a newborn. Oh yeah, when we get to our destination, we don't do this anymore, but when we were traveling with her when she was super little, we gave her like a teeny bit of Tylenol when we got to the destination, like after we left the airport, just because you, I don't know, I just feel like it kind of calms her down a little bit. And with all the germs that she's exposed to at the airport, it just kind of like eases her a little bit. And so I don't know if that's not good to do, but we do that and it works for us. We don't do it anymore. Just like I said, when she was like zero to three months. This is not necessary, but I think it's definitely worth um time to talk about. It is flying with one airline, going with one rental car, and going with one um, hotel. And this is like my biggest travel tip of all, not even just with a baby, but just with life. This is a travel tip that I will talk about all the time, not even with people who are traveling with babies, but just with everything, is stick to one airline car rental place and hotel because you will build status in each of those places and then you will get like nicer things nicer cars upgrades on hotel rooms upgrades on flights and there's nothing better than sitting first class with a newborn baby because you just have this huge seat or you're laying down and it's super convenient so if you get a credit card in each of those we use delta hertz and marriott and you can choose whatever you want i just feel like the benefits are the best in those so we have delta cards and the more money we spend on those cards the more sky miles we get, which is free trips, upgrades, all the things. When we travel, we use Hertz. And the reason is because we show up and we're um, gold members now. So we can show up and we can walk over and we can just pick whatever car we want in the gold area, get inside and leave. And we don't have to wait in long lines. And when you're traveling with a baby, there's nothing worse than landing at your destination, waiting in a long line. Your baby's hot, you're sweaty, and they're hungry and you're tired. So just having the status to not have to wait in lines is a big big deal especially with delta when you get upgrades like i said and when you get to the airport you can go in the sky priority lane so when you're checking your bags you can pretty much just go straight to the front little things like that it takes time to build status but once you do it's definitely worth it another thing that i wanted to talk about is getting a ticket for your baby until your baby's two you don't need to buy them a ticket which is amazing because <laughs> that's just like cuts your cost like crazy um, so we don't pay for tickets for Tommy. She just sits on our lap. Once she turns two, we're going to make her a Sky Miles account and start building her status because why not if we're going to pay for her tickets anyways. So at this age where Tommy's not two yet, what we do is when we book our reservation, we just add her as a lap infant and we have to type in her name and her birthday and everything and make sure you get a ticket for her. If not, go check in at the desk and make sure they add her because you can't get through security unless your baby has a, a boarding pass. Well, Jack and I are flying. I would say we try to book as many direct flights as we can just because I would rather get to the destination as fast as we can and not have Tommy get off a plane then have to get back on a plane. That just makes her more exhausted. So when possible, try to book the direct flight. 
when not possible, try to book a longer layover so the baby has a little time to get their energy out before they have to get on the flight again. I hope that answered some of your guys' questions on traveling with a baby. If you guys have any more, please drop them in the comments below and I'll answer them as fast as I can because I know I missed some, but I just wanted to make sure I got this video out before we headed out on our trip to Florida tomorrow. And I would just say my final tips are just stay calm, don't worry about anybody else or what anybody says you do what's best for your baby and if your baby's screaming seriously just block out anybody and i think people are more disposable to help you too so allow other people to help you if necessary if you're traveling with multiple kids pack as light as you can bring a bunch of outfits for your baby bring a bunch of outfits for you and i hope this was so informational for all of you like i said let me know in the comments if you have any other questions and we'll see you guys next week